What is up guys, it's your boy Solam here, back with another Classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, today I'm going to be sharing with you guys one of the most insane farms in Phase 2. This is a kind of farm that I was making in Phase 1 as well, and literally when that video went public, it did end up getting nerfed. That's why videos like this, and especially this one, will be available in early access to anyone who has my gold making guide, which you, can, which you can get through the link down below in the video description or the pinned comment. Just to talk a little bit about the guide, it's um, it used to be be 134 pages i have made a season 2 or like phase 2 update now so it's 157 instead of 134 so we have a lot more pages now considering season of discovery and phase 2 talking about the most profitable crafts and all of the farms that i'm doing as well in phase 2 in addition to that you get all of the farms you can do in classic wow the investments as well plus early access to videos like this one now once again i made a video just like this in phase 1 using the same kind of strategy that we're using here and the whole strategy ended up getting butchered back in phase one so i wouldn't be surprised if that, if that happens again this time as well so i intend to keep this video private for at least a week maybe even more depending on if anyone else is talking about the farm and when the farm just naturally becomes public i will probably make the video public as well but anyone watching it who has my gold making guide you can take advantage of the farm before that and just use it to your advantage make a hefty amount of gold because this farm is really broken we intend to keep it top secret for a while, and it's really, really broken. So, let's talk about the farm, I want to talk about the setup, what you have to do, and everything about the farm. Now, where I'm farming this right now is in Blasted Lands. I do intend to test out the same strategy in multiple places, but in Blasted Lands for now, this is a zone that isn't really a phase 2 zone at all. The mobs here are level 50 plus, and it's very hard to solo just about anything. That being said, there are some absolutely incredible loot that you can obtain in this place. You can even start your phase 3 prep here. You can get traveler's backpacks, which are selling for, I think they're like 300 gold plus. You can get the journeyman's backpack, like traveler's backpack are the 16 slots, and journeyman's are the 14 slots. On top of that, you can get green BOEs, blue BOEs. You can even start getting some epics here that are really, really valuable. So once again, we are hunting for the most top end items here the most expensive items currently in the game kind of <laughs> i mean some of the old man BO boes can be more expensive but this one here is so lowable you don't really have to be a certain class but being a hunter does help i'm just going to put that out there so for the farm itself we're using what i call the guard strategy so you're pulling mobs back to the guards and the guards will handle them for you now we're not just doing that the normal way, because the way that works is that you personally, like you as a person, you have to deal 50% of the mob's health to get loot from that mob. That being said, you can circumvent this by being in a party. So by being in a party, in this case I'm grouped with myself, so I have like, this is my alt right here on my second account. You don't have to have two accounts, you, you can have a friend, you just have to have someone in your group at the same place. So if you invite someone, don't have them be in like storm wind and think it will work they have to be in the same place or in like the in the range or yard to be able to loot the mob as long as they are able to loot the mob then it should work so just have someone who can for example craft something if you have a blacksmithing character they can go to the anvil and craft something over here while you farm that way they are doing something productive and so are you alternatively if you have a friend who's going to go afk for a while just have him afk at this place if you have guildmates doing afk stuff have them afk here as well or you can be two people farming this farm together pulling two mobs back instead of one and just choosing like looting your mob that way you can be two people you're not like interfering at all because there's so many mobs available here so you can just be two people farming this together and have it on free for all so just invite someone to your party have the loot be on free for all and then start doing what i'm going to show you right now so i'm going to show you a couple of the pools that i'm personally usually doing here and i'm trying to kill more than just one type of mob if i go down here we have both beasts and humanoids you can see the beasts are level 47 48 and sometimes 49 so they are very high level 
So when it comes to the pulls, an example of a pull would literally just be to start using ranged shot and just slow them down, try to just apply some damage here like through Serpent Sting, or slow them down in some way and then bring them back up here without losing the leash. So keep attacking them, keep running away, bring them back and you will see the guards will start attacking them very soon over here. Just bring them to some friendly guards. Now if you're playing a horde, this place will obviously not work for you, but you will have different places with different guards. The only thing is the guards they have to be friendly to you baseline so you can't have a neutral faction that you have grinded rep for it has to be a baseline friendly guard in this case you can see i dealt probably about two percent of the mob's health and we still got all the loot i can't skin but just dragging up the loot window right now we got a basilisk brain basilisk heart and this one as well so just in silver values from that one kill we looted 17 silver like 10 silver from basilisk heart and 7 silver from large basilisk tail on top of that we're getting the basilisk brains which are currently on the auction house for 2 gold, but they won't sell for 2 gold. But I mean, these are used in consumables that people will want to have in phase 3. So, right now, the, the basilisks especially, they are usually very expensive, because their share is spawned with the boars. So, farming basilisks right now, when almost nobody else is doing it, you can stock up on so many basilisk brains and be ready for phase 3, and then capitalize on just selling them. It's also a repeatable quest, plus people might want to buy them for the quest they hand in, for the experience. By having all the items here, you can get like 20,000 experience, I, I think it is. So people might be willing to cash out and buy these items to level up fast to like be in the leveling race but i'm just gonna keep pulling here pull a couple more mobs usually what i do is i pull all of these um, mobs right here and i try to clear my way to the humanoids right over here we have a camp of humanoids all over there that i'm trying to basically get my way to those humanoids can drop rune cloth they can drop um yeah, they can drop rune cloth and all of the good types of cloth that we want to have. And they can also drop, including these ones by the way, they can drop really good stuff like greens, they can drop cloth, they can start dropping scrolls of agility, strength, protection, spirit, intellect, like all of the good scrolls, they can start dropping those as well. Now they also drop something called the imperfect janathist fragment and the blue one as well plus they can drop the traveler's backpacks literally every mob here can drop both the 14 mob uh, the 14 slot bag and also the 16 slot bag so for example if i just move a little bit over here i will pull this basilisk but as you can see we have these ones right here the shadow sworn thug they are skull marks so they're really high level i think they're level 52 but you can still do the same thing with those as well especially being a hunter you rarely ever miss your shots anyway so so um, be a hunter, do the farm, you even have aspect of the cheetah so you can easily run away, and then just pull the mobs back up this ledge right here and bring them to your mobs, or to your guards basically, and the guards will literally handle the mob for you, and once again by being in a party you literally circumvent having to deal 50% of the mob's health. You can even do this like as a hunter you can drag elites through the entire zone, so you can go out and hunt for elites in blasted lands and take care of the elites as well, by dragging them back to the guards. Now if you're dragging them too far and just be aware that eventually they will respawn and like the, the guards will run away instead. I'm just gonna feign death here and hope that works so we can actually just get the guards on them instead. So there we go. And then we're gonna kill this guy, get hopefully one more basilisk brain right here, and they're really good to get. And then we can pull one of the high levels. Once again, all the loot, there we go, another basilisk brain. I really wish I could skin these, but I can't with the current skill that we have. But now we have cleared a path so we can start going to the high level mobs, which you might be able to get the chests over here as well. The thing is though, they do start respawning by the time you've cleared about six to seven mobs, they start spawning again. So be aware of that. You probably won't be able to get to any chest, but I mean, you can you can try. <laughs> you can certainly try. So we're gonna pull this guy and pull him all the way back. A couple of these these ones, they, they throw stuff on you, so just be aware of that. But for the most part here, it's not really a problem. You just pull this guy back. Watch out for any high level boars here. They're going to stun you they're really annoying. Now we just keep running, right? We can even send a pet in and do some DPS as well, and then we run up this hill. There we go, so my pet has aggro now, so we can just use the pet and drag the pet back up, and bring the mob with the pet as well.
<clears throat> and there we go. So now all the guards are going to be going for this mob right here. We're going to try to stun the mob, which didn't really work. I'm just going to run in circles until the guards get aggro here. Then there we go. So now they're going to take care of this. A level 53 mob that can drop epic. So we can start getting stuff like Warden Staff from these mobs. In addition, you can get the 16 slot backpacks, 14 slot backpacks, and a whole lot more, both blue and epic items, that you can also get from these thugs. So hopefully we get lucky here, but I wouldn't really bet on it. Now we, we got one rune cloth though, and as you can see, the rune cloth right now are one gold each on the auction house. Once again, I wouldn't really expect them to sell, but if they do, that's perfect, right? But I wouldn't really bank on them selling for this price. Because that would be kind of broken. So you just keep doing this. You keep running back now. Like now you have one boar spawning here again. And these boars are so good because they're so close to the guards as well. So just bring them back up. Be wary because they're going to like sprint and charge at you. So keep that in mind when it comes to the boars. Especially the boars. They can be a little bit annoying. Everything else is just straightforward. At the camp though where I just pulled a couple of mobs. There are some casters. So be aware of those as well. Just try to line of sight and run away from the cast. And you should be fine. And here you can see like a whole mob of guards just coming in and taking care of the boar. I, I simply don't understand how this still works because we made a video on this in phase 1 doing the same thing it's in South Shore. Like we killed the murlocs in South Shore using the same strategy and Blizzard somehow patched that. But it doesn't seem like they globally patched it. It seems like they only patched those specific guards because these guards still work. So I'm, I'm just really hoping you're able to use this and make some gold. Now, at the end here, I just showed you, showed you the pools, the setup and everything. I do want to cover some of the loot so you know like what you can expect. And let's just talk about the potential here. So first of all, when it comes to the loot, you can loot this one right here, the Imperfect Dranathist Fragment. And this one will give you access to, or you can hand it in for Kum Ish's Junk. And this one you will get a bunch of greens from. They are really not that valuable, I mean they can be depending on like what stats they roll with. But for the most part, you just hand in the quest and get a green. It's like, it's a free green that you're getting. I think you can even get multiple, but it's just like an item that you pick up and hand in and get some green items. You can also also, like on a much lower percentage of course, you can get the blue one, the Flawless Dranathus Sphere. This one can be handed in for the Emerald and Crusted Chest, and this one contains a lot of blue items like the Giant Stalker Bracers, level 42, 43 items with 10 strength, 5 agility, and just a whole bunch of blue BOE items, some of which will be BLB Biss by the way in phase 3. Like for example Cassandra's Grace is absolutely insane for healers, 44 healing done, and also some stamina and some spirit. This one is looking very juicy. Overall, a bunch of blue BOEs here that can be really good in the next phase. Like, most of them are level 43 plus. Some are even level 50 plus, but for the most part, it's phase 3 items that you'll be getting from this bag. Scrolling down, we also have, like, several formulas for enchanting, and we can even start getting the Traveler's Backpack. I think that's on the last page, right? We can get Recipe for the Elixir of the Giants, for example. Really good uh, elixir right there. And some plants Plans, some elixirs, some plans, and scrolling down we have the Traveler's Backpack that you can get from this item. And we also have kind of the Paddy Capacity, the, whew, the Decapitator, there we go, and Warden Staff that you can get from this item. Now, going back to the cultist that I just pulled, we can take a look at his drops as well. He can drop the Imperfect Dranathus Fragment, the Flawless Sphere, Rune Cloth, some of the, the food and drink. They can drop major healing potions and superior mana potions, which will be valuable in Phase 3, by the way. Especially the mana potions. They're level 41 requirements, so people will start buying these when they get to level 41. They can also drop Rank 3 and some Rank 4 scrolls that you can also use. Like, Rank 3 scrolls right now are really usable. Inside Nomer, for example, the Strength one and the Agility one that you can use as well. Now on top of that they can drop star rubies, a bunch of greens and most of all travelers backpacks which once again are selling for hundreds of gold on the auction house. Now the travelers backpacks are listed with a 0.1% drop chance so on average you would have to kill a thousand mobs. Now if you kill one, let's just say you kill a hundred mobs per hour there, like that's going to be a lot by the way but a hundred mobs per hour and you spend 10 hours to get one traveler's backpack. If the backpack sells for 400 gold, which is currently the value on my server for example, that is 40 gold per hour. 
from that one item alone. On top of that, you have all the other items we just talked about, including the consumables that we're just picking up here in the Basilisk Brains, right? All of those world buff items from Blasted Lands. It all really adds up to a hefty amount of gold here, if you just look at the, the jackpot items combined with the steady gold. Now, going over to the Basilisks, you can see that they can also drop some good stuff. They have the Basilisk Brain, which we just picked up. They have a bunch of really good vendor items, like the Basilisk Heart and the Scale. The Scale is vendoring for 12 silver each, this one is 10 silver each. They can drop the Fragments and the Spheres as well, and a bunch of Greens, including also the Journeyman's Backpack. On a pretty low drop chance though, but the Journeyman's man's backpack can drop, and even the troll hide bag is like said to be dropping from these bad boys, so you can get that as well. And then there's a whole bunch of green items on top that you can also get from these bad boys. So the, the loot tables here are really good, and I, I just think it's fantastic because you're not spending all the time killing the mobs. You're just pulling them, bringing them back to a guard, and the guard handles absolutely everything. As you can see, this one and this one can also drop from these mobs. The Warden Staff, by the way, might be insane, especially for Feral Druids. And scrolling further down, I was looking to see if they can drop the Traveler's Backpacks, because they should be able to, but I, I'm not seeing it right here, man. But they can also drop the Cassandra's Grace, the Heimberg Helmet, Needle Treader, Needle Threader, and we also have a Epic Gun, like BOE with 14 Agility that you can use at level 43 plus. So those are some of the loot tables that you can pick up here. Once again, it's just like a really good farm you can do, and a really fun, clever use of game mechanics, which I don't think is intentional. <laughs> but as you can see, we picked up three Basilisk Brains so far. We had one before the video, got two more during the video, and it's just a chill farm to do, because once again, you're just pulling mobs, bringing them back, and getting some free loot, most of which are really usable in phase three. So that's the video, a bit of a long one, but hopefully it covers everything you want to know about this farm and the farming method itself. Now, once again, this video will be available in early access to anyone who has my gold making guide for quite a while here, probably a week or more, so hopefully you're able to make a little bit more gold before it goes public, and if you do want to check it out, the link to the guide will be down below. I would really appreciate it, and once again, you're able to help me out a little bit by supporting me directly as a content creator, and I should be able to help you make some gold in Season of Discovery. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below, and let me know in the comments as well if you're able to pull some good loot from this farm. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.